peak that you're looking at on your screen right now is perhaps the most recognized mountain peak. It is the Everest. So close, yet so far. And that makes it every climber's ultimate dream. 8,849 meters tall, Everest. Beckons climbers from wherever in the world they might be. And every year they come. In fact, come in hordes. On average, between 700 to 1,000 people attempt to climb Mount Everest each year. However, those who gather at the base camp and attempt the climb leave behind tons of trash. In fact, so much so that Everest is also known as the world's highest garbage dump. Estimates vary, but according to recent Nepal government-backed cleanups and expert assessments, between 30 to 50 tons of garbage is still on the mountain itself. And cleaning Everest because of extreme weather conditions and altitude is a very difficult job, almost impossible for humans. And that's where the guest I'm joined by today comes in. Raj Bikram Maharajan, the CEO and co-founder of Airlift. His drones helping clean up the Everest, along with, of course, assisting Sherpas, carrying supplies, among other things. Raj, welcome. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you so much for inviting me here. Raj, before anything, tell us a little bit about yourself and, of course, your company. Uh, you have a background in aeronautics, so the connection is clear. But to try to clean up Everest with drones, how did that happen? So, my name is Raj Bikram Maharajan, and I am from Nepal. Uh, currently, I am in Kathmandu, which is also the capital city of Nepal. Uh, I completed my aeronautical engineering and then I joined civil aviation industry here in Nepal. So uh, for almost five years, I worked at Malay Airlines, which is a local international airline here. And uh, I had always been a very keen lover of uh, uh, unmanned aviation also since the beginning of my uh, university days. And that is when I started learning about drones and the use cases of drones. Uh, but after the 2015 earthquake in Nepal, I realized that drones are more than just toys. They're actually life-saving tools. And that is where I started using drones to create 3D models of the heritage sites. And uh, so that, that was one of the first applications. And after that, then I also explored into the mapping industry because Nepal, we do not have our own satellites. And that is why we always have to buy satellite imageries from uh, foreign companies. Right? and which are very low in resolution and very expensive. That is where the drones come in as a low-cost uh, technology to provide high-resolution maps. And that is how we, again, uh, revolutionize the map industry in Nepal. And so uh, one day we were in talk with the uh, Kumbu Pasanglava municipality, uh, where we proposed them to create a map of their region. And uh, since uh, they realized that we have expertise in drone, they asked us a very simple question, whether these drones could be used to bring down the garbage from the Everest. And at first I was really astonished by the question, but then I did a little, little bit of research because I had already worked in a drone delivery concept before, but I had not found a proper application where this drone technology we could use. But then when I talked to the municipality a chairman and realized his problem, then we realized this drone technology could be used to help bring down the garbage and save lives of the Sherpas. And so that is how we came about to use drones to bring down these garbages and clean up the Mount Everest. Interesting, interesting. And we'll, we'll definitely, you know, go into detail and talk more about it. Uh, but quickly, how difficult was it for you to set up a, a drone-based company in Nepal? Yes, I mean, it was a very challenging. I mean, as it is for every any other startup or or a company. Uh, at first, in 2015, uh, when uh, you know I first started using drones for search and rescue, uh, we it was almost impossible to fly drones in Nepal. And uh, if you were flying a drone, then uh, you would be deemed as a terrorist, right? It was it was completely illegal. But even though uh, yeah, you it fly was them without permission, you mean? Right. Yes. Uh, but again, uh, you know, navigating all, all those uh, you know ministries and government offices just to fly drone for five minutes was too difficult. And, but again, in 2019, we were finally able to convince the government the, about the use, good use cases of drones, right? And then uh, we read, uh, then the government had uh, published a new regulation of the drone. And so currently we are using the drone regulation that was uh, again published in 2019. And again, so we have, but besides the policy there, Many other challenges, like uh, in establishing the company, coming up with the insurance, coming up with a business model, and you know getting right manpower, and again, uh, so everything uh, 
it was very challenging. But again, uh, despite of all these challenges, uh, it is again a very uh, fun-loving job, and uh, it always excites me to do more every day. Yeah, congratulations to both you and of course uh, your co-founders. Uh, despite the challenges, you guys persisted, and of course uh, now you have uh, what looks like a very successful startup story from Nepal. Uh, now talking about, of course, uh, you know the drones uh, that you have deployed uh, at the Everest specifically. Uh, so let's just get some basics out of the way. How high your drones can go? Because at the end of the day, we are talking about the world's tallest mountain, which is eight thousand eight hundred forty-nine meters high. Yes, exactly. I mean, uh, at first, uh, you know, we did our first trial in the April of two thousand twenty-four, and uh, during our first trial, I was, uh, uh, you know, a little bit scared because. I wasn't because that was the first time I was also trekking to the Everest Peace Camp, and that was the highest okay. I had ever been. All right, and also mm. I wasn't because uh, before that also we had tried using our drones uh, at a higher altitude, but the problem was with the batteries and also the the motors were not strong enough to provide enough thrust to fly our drones. Right, uh, but again, uh, uh, we did that test, and it uh, fortunately everything went really well. Our drones flew uh, up to the height of 6,100 meters. That is uh, up to Camp 1, uh, which is at 6,100 right. meters. And so uh, we were able to, uh, you know, like fly through the treacherous Kumbhwa is fall. For climbers, it usually takes from seven to nine hours to climb the, the most difficult part of climbing Mount Everest, that is the Kumbhwa is fall. Whereas for the drone, it only took five minutes at most. Okay. And, and, and what about the payload? What is the amount of weight that your drones can carry? Because uh, as far as Everest is concerned, we are talking about really rapid, really fast wind gusts. We are talking about high altitude. Uh, so how much can they carry up and down Everest? Yes, so that is also uh, another challenge for us. Uh, at sea level, our drone is capable to lift uh, 30 kilograms. Uh, whereas okay. uh, at that altitude, uh, the height of 6,000 meters, uh, we only carry uh, 50% of the capacity, that is uh, 15 kilograms at most. But within this 15 kilogram, we were able to carry the ladders, the tent, the ropes, the oxygen cylinders, right, all the necessary items uh, up to the camp one, and again, bring down uh, a 15 kilogram of load uh, to the base camp. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, as far as uh, the garbage, which is, uh, on Everest is concerned, that is close to 30 to 50 tons. So even at this rate, that's going to take a very long time or uh, even for you guys to be able to clean up Everest. The Everest, as you said, again, there's a lot of garbage over there. And uh, also because it is one of the most, uh, it's the highest mountain and most well-known mountain. Uh, people want to conquer the mountain. And uh, again, there is going to be waste every year. So now what we have planned is from the coming years, we will have a dedicated drone port where we will have multiple drones and a very robust charging station also. That is also another problem because we do not have electricity supply at the Everest Space Camp. We have to rely on the generators to charge our batteries, right? So this year, we, it was our operational test as well. And from next year, uh, we will be tying up with the Kumbu Pasangalam Rural Municipality and the SPCC. Uh, to uh, build a dedicated drone port with our multiple drones, with our dedicated manpowers and dedicated uh, charging systems. Okay, and so far, uh, how much garbage has uh, uh, your startup been able to remove from the Everest? Uh, if we are to combine the data from 2024 and 25, I think we have brought almost a one ton of garbage from Camp 1 to the Everest Space Camp. Right, and think about these garbage were the, all those uh, empty oxygen bottles uh, to the discarded tent and plastic materials, and you know, like so many uh, stuffs from uh, the Everest. Right, right, and also talk to us for a little while about the impact uh, that your drones have had on you know assisting the Sherpas and of course the overall safety and efficiency of expeditions because uh, uh, that's where your drones have also been deployed and used. Yes, exactly. You know, uh, last year when we went to the Everest Base Camp, our actual objective was to clean the Mount Everest, right? But we realized we were not just cleaning the Mount Everest, we were also saving the lives of Sherpas because 
you know, as I mentioned, the Kumbu icefall is the most difficult part of climbing the Mount Everest. And every year, actually in 2013, I, I think, right? I think it was in 2013 or 14, so many Sherpas, you know, they fell into the crevices and they died. And uh, if they were not carrying all that heavy load, maybe they would have been some chances of their survival. Uh, but from this year, we have assisted the icefall doctors to help them fix the ropes and, and help them uh, make the route uh, to climb the Mount Everest. So they, uh, you know, uh, climbed the Kumbha Icefall without any load on their back. And once they reached uh, at the destination, so our drones were there uh, ready to uh, deploy and, you know, deliver the ropes and ladders and tents uh, to fix, to help them fix the route. So from this year, the, even the, the first thing was that usually it takes a, at least two weeks to fix the uh, icefall route. Whereas this year we did it twice uh, in a faster and I think a much safer. Right, right. Oh, that's great to hear because, of course, uh, Everest remains every climber's ultimate dream. Uh, yeah, having said that, uh, Raj, uh, another question which comes to my mind is uh, uh, if just the garbage removal from Everest is concerned, that's, of course, a Herculean task because we're talking about anywhere between 30 to 50 tons of garbage as per various estimates. And uh, so you need to scale up. And now, when it comes to scaling up, what are some of the challenges you think you'll have to face and uh, where do you think help is going to come from? Is it going to come from the government or are you looking to raise money from elsewhere? What's the plan? Yes, right now, uh, we have a very limited drone with a limited capacity. Uh, so uh, in order to uh, you know, you know, you know, scale up our operations, uh, we'll have to either increase the number of drones, increase the number of fleet of drones or uh, bring in drones with higher payload capacity. Right, so for this task, we are also uh, currently raising funds from investors from the government side as well, and also exploring new drones as well as also trying to develop uh, you know, drones with a higher payload capacity. Uh, maybe if we can um, build a drone with a 50 kilogram or 100 kilogram payload capacity, uh, then I think uh, that can help us speed up the cleaning uh, the Everest project. Right. And do you have any plans yourself of climbing the Everest? Uh, yeah, I, I would love to do that one day, but <laughs> for that, I need to start, start training from now. Uh, but I think that will be one uh, something very good, uh, you know, uh, I think purpose flight. Right. What's, the, what's the highest altitude uh, that you've been to? You've been to the Everest base camps, which is what, about yeah. between 15 and 16,000? Yeah, uh, I think the highest altitude that I've been to is 5,800 meters. Uh, yes, that is a four kilometer. Yes, right, right. You know, and and not not to plan this, but I've been slightly higher. I've been to Umlingla, uh, you know, the pass which is in uh, Ladakh, and that's about nineteen thousand feet. Uh, so, uh, but good to know. And um, and and on that note, Raj, thank you so much. We wish you all the best. Uh, in your efforts and of course not just with your startup but also of course with the idea with which uh, you're operating and working and uh, best of luck from all of us here and thank you so much for taking the time and talking to us thank you so much thank you so much